If you think Karens are bad, wait until you check out male Karens. They're 10 times more aggressive, which means it's pretty easy for them to get caught appearances. Today, we'll be looking at some of those male Karens getting prison sentences. First up, we have Ronnie O'Neill. He went down for a double murder, but got charged with three life sentences. This is how O'Neill chose to act the day of his hearing. I am not sorry for something I didn't do, and I am not sorry for the things I did do. Mr. O'Neill, I'm right. listen, stop right, stop, All right. listen to me. I'm not, I'm You're not. You're not gonna raise your voice again. I'm not, not gonna, gonna raise, raise my voice again. again. I'm not. I will have you removed from this courtroom. I consented to you without you being present. Yes, ma'am. I understand, yourself. young. Thank you. But I will say, I'm sorry for your loss. 19 years I've been at this job. I've seen human beings killed at the hands of others in every way imagined. You name it, I've seen it. Shooting, stabbings, drownings, suffocates, blown apart by uh, cars and DUI manslaughter cases. Horrible things. This is the worst case I've ever seen. Next, we have Joseph McAlpin. He heartlessly pulled a gun on a couple and their dog at a cart dealership. McAlpin was in court for his hearing when he had this to say before he received his sentencing. A serious scenario. My life is very important to me and it's not just something that I would just want to throw away, especially not taking my family through that. I mean, being on death row and them having to live with the fact this is what you asked for. You can since he said this in court. You can since he said it's a delivery or death, and that was just very selfish of me. And I just want to show more respect for that. And like I said, once again, I apologize for the course that's coming out. Thank you, Mr. McAlpin. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, at this time we're going to take a brief recess so that I can uh, reflect upon what Mr. McAlpin has just told me, factor that into what I have already reviewed about this case. When I come back out, I'll be in a position to announce my decision relative to counsel. One and two, and uh, so thank you for your indulgence. I really appreciate it. We rise. Okay, the court's going to proceed to impose sentence at this time. With regard to count number one, the aggravated murder of Trina Tomola Kuznick, the court's going to impose a sentence of death plus three years on firearm specification. Count number two for the aggravated murder of Michael Kuznick death, plus three years on the firearm specification. Count number eight, aggravated robbery. This involves the robbery of Katrina. 11 years, plus three years for the gun specification, and second to each other. Did I say count eight? Yes. Thank you. Count number seven, if you're a little bit out of order here. Aggravated robbery of Michael, uh, 11 years, plus three years for the firearm specification. Count number 11, aggravated burglary on Trina, 11 years plus three years for the gun specification. Count number 12, aggravated burglary of Mike, 11 years plus three years on the firearm specification. Having a weapon while under disability, count 21, 36 months. Count 23 and 24, both grand theft, 18 months each. And count number 26, cleaning animals, 12 months. Counts 21, 23, 24 and 26 do not have any specifications attached there too. With regard to the case Next, we have Michael Sykes. He brutally murdered his girlfriend's children because they were taking up too much of her time. This is what the judge had to say to him at his sentencing. Vulnerable members of our society. And as the verdict attests, you showed no compassion or no mercy to innocent children. You deserve none from the court. You failed as a husband, you failed as a father, you failed as a human being. In my opinion, based on what you did, you do, not, you do not deserve to ever see the light of day. So accordingly, your sentence on count two of the indictment, murder in the first degree, the killing of Zianna Cutler, and the others named therein, is a sentence of life without parole. Under count three of the indictment, murder in the first degree, the killing of Malia Sykes, and the others named therein, your sentence is life without parole. This sentence, on count three, 
will run consecutively to the sentence I imposed on count two. On the count four of the indictment, attempted murder in the first degree of miracle couple, your sentence is a minimum of 25 years, a maximum of life. This sentence will run consecutively to the sentences for murder in the first degree on the counts two and three. In the first trial, you were convicted of murder in the second degree on the count five as to Rebecca Cutler. I sent you to 25 years to life on that charge. I now order that the sentences I am imposing today on counts two, three, and four run consecutively to the sentence of 25 to life already imposed on the count five for the murder of Rebecca Cutler. You were also convicted of grand larceny in the fourth degree, a lesser included of robbery in the third degree in the first trial. I sent you to one and a third to four years of state prison. Up next, we have Dylan Schumacher. He not only verbally abused, but beat up a little boy, and for that, he received this sentence. I didn't mean to kill Austin. Actually, I really didn't. You really think I did that? I didn't mean to hurt him. Dylan Schumacher walked into a state Supreme Court room pleading his case, telling his victim's mother and the court he's remorseful for what he did. Shoemaker was sentenced Friday for beating 23-month-old Austin Smith last March. Before the sentence was handed down, Shoemaker and his defense attorney fought for the minimum sentence, 15 years to life. I can't take back what was done. I wish I could. I would give my life for Austin. I loved him a lot. Austin Smith was completely defenseless. That's a, that's a given. But there were other dynamics at work there, including my client's inability to either control his anger or frustration and his inexperience in babysitting. Based on his short life now, what is to say he won't do this again? Well, we don't know that. I think it's completely unlikely. It was a situational, circumstantial thing. In Judge M. William Bowler's last words to Shoemaker, he told the now 17-year-old that in his short life, he's caused so much despair to so many people Bowler said he listened. The record will show that you admitted on July, that on July 23rd, 2013, in a phone call to your mother from the holding center, you stated, and I got a quote from the court reporter, I am a 16-year-old blonde. Probably all I have to do is cry in front of the jury, and they're going to feel sorry for me, end quote. Afterwards, Shoemaker was sentenced to 25 years to life behind bars. Up next, we have a convict who goes by the name Inacio Rodriguez, and like a Karen, could not control his temper. Rodriguez had brutally murdered a child, and this is how he reacted during the impact statement being given by the victim's mother. The truth. Tell her the truth. Tell, tell her everything was supposed to be. Tell her the whole truth. Don't don't lie to her. Tell her the whole truth. Tell her the whole truth. The whole truth. It is the order of the court that you be sentenced to 50 years confinement. Nor did he escape the misery surrounding the case. The four-month-old's mother let Rodriguez know how much she hurt. I didn't run anything what you did to her son. And for that, I can't ever see myself forgiving you. You were supposed to be our protector, not the one to break our hearts. But when she talked of her daughter, Rodriguez started shouting. As she gets older, she will start asking questions. Then um, tell her the truth. Right. Tell her the truth. Tell her the truth. Tell, right. tell her everything was supposed to be. Tell her the whole truth. Don't don't lie to her. Tell her the I'm whole not, truth. Tell her the whole truth. Family. The whole truth.